I love talking wide receiver rankings, but I hate talking injuries. So this is going to be a little bit of a weird video where we have to give so many freaking injury updates. Starting off at the top though, we don't. Jefferson Chase, still clearly the top two guys, right? I mean, we are going to continue to say it all off season. Both these wide receivers have the ceiling to have 2,000 receiving yards this next season. And both of them have the floor of being what? I mean, maybe the wide receiver five. Like, you can't go wrong with taking either of these players in round one. I mean, Jefferson was the best 23-year-old wide receiver in NFL history last year. And Jamar Chase was even better than Justin Jefferson in year two. Now, going over to our next guy, Tyreek Hill is going to be a little more controversial. Where I know most people would rather have Cooper Cup over Tyreek. But with Tyreek, I'm going to look at the fact that he averaged 108 receiving yards on a per game basis with Tua last year. And if you're looking at my Jalen Waddle ranking later on, you'll see I expect Tua to be playing all 17. Now, Cooper Cup is our next guy who arguably has higher ceiling. I mean, the man led the NFL in receptions, receiving yards, receiving touchdowns in 2021. But he is dealing with a hamstring. He's pushing 30. He's going to be in a very bad offense where Las Vegas is saying they're only going to win six and a half games this next year. So I will be a little bit lower on Cup than these guys but going over to Stefan Diggs you have nothing to be concerned with three straight seasons top 10 finish he's averaged 9.88 targets per game over the past three years the man's at 2.4 yards per route run and 110 intended air yards per game the man is elite across the board. He is an elite level quarterback with Josh Allen, who funny enough, I actually have a very confident feeling will have at least one passing yard week one against the Jets. And if you agree with me on that one, highly recommend going to check out Underdog Fantasy. If you sign up to Underdog Fantasy with promo code FLOCK, you're going to get an exclusive week one pick -em. More than less than half a passing yard, Josh Allen against the Jets. Also, this is where we are going through through drafting every single night on this live stream. So even if you aren't interested in Josh Allen, more than half a passing yard, you can find the link to Underdog in the description, in the comment section to get into a draft with us this year. Their best ball drafts, no time commitment at all during the year. That's how I drafted 700 teams that won $150,000 on Underdog last season. And if you sign up with promo code FLOCK, not only are you going to get the exclusive Josh Allen special pick -em, but you're also going to get my 2023 fantasy football rankings, a 100% a positive match up to $100 and a free trial to flockfantasy.com where you can find our 2023 fantasy football draft guide. But going over to our next guy, we will be looking at C.D. Lamb, who has continuously improved over the past three seasons to where this past year he was the wide receiver seven from a points per game perspective. I thought everybody would be in agreement this year that C.D. Lamb is now a round one fantasy football selection, but I see people pushing him down to the second round. I mean, this is someone that's younger than Kenny Pickett, had a 28% team target share last season, had 2.5 yards per route run, and that includes the games where Dak Prescott missed. He was even better in the 12 games Dak played where he averaged 18 and a half points per contest. He's younger than Pickett. You're going to assume that he continues to get better. And I'm honestly surprised to see that people have A.J. Brown ahead of him. I mean, A.J. Brown, our next guy, is very good in his own right, right? I mean, 2.7, 2.7, 2.8 yards per route run over the past three seasons. He was the wide receiver eight from a fantasy points per game perspective last year. But you will have Dallas Goddard playing the entire season. You have Devonta Smith going into year three. You have a team that's probably going to lead the NFL in rushing. It's just a little weird to me seeing people draft A.J. Brown over Lamb despite the fact that Lamb is stepping into his prime and was already better than A.J. Brown in fantasy last season. Now, our next guy will be Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, one of my most drafted wide receivers on underdog because we're getting him as like the wide receiver 10-11 over there in the middle of round two. But this is someone that's been, on average, the wide receiver three over the past three seasons. He's averaged a 30% team target share, 2.87 yards per route run. Arguably, Devontae Adams has been the best wide receiver in fantasy over the past three seasons. Now, yes, I understand you have Jimmy Garoppolo as his quarterback this next year, and that probably pushes him down your rankings just a bit, but I'm not trying to sit here and tell you Devontae Adams is the wide receiver one, the wide receiver two in fantasy again. No, I am pushing him down still. I think he's an incredible value with where he's going. 
Now, our next guy will be Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's kind of won this offseason, right? I mean, this is a wide receiver that was already great as a rookie, where in the eight games played with no Zach Wilson, he went out there and averaged about 17 and a half points per game and 11 and a half targets per game. So an elite rookie season after he was an elite prospect coming out of Ohio State, then you get the massive quarterback upgrade with Aaron Rodgers coming over. You don't really see much target competition added in. I mean, you only have McCole Hardman, Alan Lazard coming in. You have Corey Davis retiring. You have Alan Lazard dealing with the shoulder sprains. I mean, right now, Garrett Wilson is in a prime spot this next season to continue to take a ridiculous amount of targets for the Jets, getting better in year two, while at the same time now getting elite level quarterback play. Now, our next player will be Amon Ross St. Brown. Really like Amon Ross St. Brown in a full PBR format. Not going to be surprised if St. Brown leads the NFL in receptions this next season. Now, I will say I'm going to be a little bit less excited about Amon Ross St. Brown in a non-PPR format, just considering the fact he's not going to be a wide receiver operating deep downfield, right? You're not expecting big plays from Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, last year, only 54 intended air yards on a per-game basis. Great option in PPR. Non-PPR, you probably stay away. Now, Waddle is our next player. With Waddle, I mean, this is a wide receiver that was great last season, but could have been better. 17 points per game when Tua played alongside Jalen Waddle. Now, that did fall down to only 10.5 points per game with no Tua. So, you're really banking on Tua playing the full 17 this next season. But honestly, I think it's going to happen. Now, Olave is our next player. And if we go over to the road of his screener to get a real sense of how damn good Chris Olave was as a rookie, I want to be looking at his target share in this offense. So, essentially, how big of a piece of this pie is he accounting for? And if we also look at his receiving yards per game, the only only other wide receivers as rookies since the year 2000 to look comparable were AJ Green, stud, Julio Jones, stud, Keenan Allen, stud, Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., and Jamar Chase. Yes, every single one of these wide receivers were a top five option at some point in their NFL career. Now, I'm confident in saying that Olave is going to be a top five option at some point. Now, the question is, is that in year two? Now, our next guy will be T. Higgins. Yes, with Higgins, he did take a step back on the surface last year, but if you dive under the hood, if you actually remove the weeks where he played fewer than 30% of the snaps, weeks 1, 5, 14, and 17, you'll see he was just as good as he was in 2021. In those games, I mean, he went out there and he averaged 76 receiving yards per contest. I mean, he had the wide receiver 12 finish in back-to-back -back seasons now, if you actually account the games that he played. Now, Devonta Smith is our next player. And Devonta Smith, wide receiver 14 last year. Elite level breakout, obviously. He had possibly the best wide receiver season in college football history in the year 2000. It's an elite level offense. Just, you have so much competition where this is going to be a team that ends up leading the NFL in rushing, while at the same time, you have A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. Now, our next guy will be DK Metcalf. And yeah, DK Metcalf is a riser in these rankings. You also see that Tyler Lockett's a riser later on. The reason these guys have to rise is because Jackson Smith and Jacob is falling. Now, JSN looks like he's going to dodge the PUP, which is good news for him. But the end of the day, I do think Metcalf is a wide receiver that will be impacted at the very end of the season once Jackson Smith and Jigba fully emerges as possibly the top option in this Seattle Seahawks offense. It just looks like it's not going to happen, I mean, until probably week 12, 13, 14, now with the JSN wrist injury. Amari Cooper will still be our next guy, and I understand everybody's going to hate to see Amari here, and yes, I get your messages every single day. I know you'd rather us rank Calvin Ridley over Amari Cooper. With Amari, as the wide receiver 18 from a points-per-game perspective last season, and now he's going to get the quarterback upgrade with Deshaun Watson coming in. And you really have no added target competition outside of Elijah Moore, who I'm not too worried about. So yeah, I'm actually fully willing to say that, yeah, our next guy in Calvin Ridley may have a higher ceiling than Amari Cooper, but we're going to rank Amari there based off the floor he has as well. I mean, very few players have a higher ceiling than Calvin Ridley, right? I mean, you go back to 2020, Calvin Ridley was the wide receiver four from a points per game perspective. And if you remove the two weeks where he played fewer than 70% of the snaps, he actually averaged over 100 receiving yards per game. That was with Julio Jones and a dusty old Matt Ryan in there. Now you have Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. Calvin Ridley looks like he's going to be able to dominate the targets there. So I agree. I think Calvin has a higher ceiling than what you get with Amari. I just think Amari has... A comparable ceiling where if you look at Watson's wide receiver ones, 
I mean, 2017 Hopkins, number two, 2018 Hopkins, number three, 2019 Hopkins, number four, 2020 Will Fuller, number seven. I mean, Watson always has a top 10 wide receiver. Now, our next guy is going to be Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel really is not trending in the right direction, right? I mean, I will say, y'all know I'm a big Lance guy. I really hope Lance does well at some point in his NFL career. But Brock Purdy is going to be better for Debo Samuel than Trey Lance would have been. Because what you would have had to worry about with Trey Lance is Trey Lance going out there and possibly stealing rushing production, possibly stealing rushing touch. Brock Purdy's not taking that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, Brock Purdy is just going to dump off to Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey. So, I mean, Debo, I don't know if he can get back to the wide receiver three finish that he had back in 2021, but Purdy would be the guy to help him out. Now, Christian Watson's our next player. Watson will see the touchdown rate come down. He's not going to be able to sit there at 10.5% forever but to be fair with Christian Watson I think that you may just see so much more volume going in his direction that he's going to be able to outweigh the touchdown drop off just because last year if you looked at wide receivers to have as many yards per route run as Christian Watson you'd be looking at Cooper Cup, Jalen Waddle, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill and that's legitimately it. Now going over to our next player we are going to be looking at Keenan Allen, full BBR format. I think you can be excited about Keenan Allen, right? But non-BBR would be a little bit more concerned. I mean, I'm still concerned overall with Keenan. This is a wide receiver that is now for three straight seasons seen a decline in his overall target share, going from 26% to 24% to 21% on a per game basis. This is a wide receiver that's fallen from the wide receiver seven to the wide receiver 10 to the wide receiver 12 from a per game perspective. You also add in a round one NFL pick with Quinton Johnston here. So I think that there are definite red flags with Keenan Allen, which is why I'm going to have him ranked lower than we have previously, right? But our next guy will be DeAndre Hopkins. So Hopkins is going to be moving up a little bit in these rankings, considering the fact you have the Traylon Burks injury. I mean, Burks right now looks like he maybe is in play to start the season, but I mean, Burks has missed valuable playing time with Ryan Tannehill and DeAndre Hopkins this offseason. I think it fully cements DeAndre Hopkins as the top option for Tannehill, but very similar to Keenan Allen. Both these guys were drafted back in 2013. You are going to have to be a little bit concerned about the age and injuries. Now, Mike Williams will be our next player. Mike Williams has had back-to-back -back finishes inside the top 24. Now, the issue with Mike Williams is almost the exact opposite of what you're going to get with, like, Keenan Allen, right? Mike Williams isn't going to see the consistent target share. You'd be a little bit more excited about Mike Williams in that non-PPR format where Mike is going to be operating further downfield. He's going to give you the big plays. He's going to give you the yardage totals. However, you're probably not going to see a ton of receptions. You're not going to see a ton of volume going in his direction. Now, Drake London is our next player. And with Drake London, I will say I love the talent, hate the situation. Very similar to Kyle Pitts, right? And it all comes down to the price point. When I'm looking at Kyle Pitts being drafted next to Zay Flowers, I'm like, okay, yeah, that price point makes sense. So you do have to reevaluate that with Drake London as well. But Drake London last year averaged two yards per route run, which is very impressive. But what was most impressive is if you're going to go through and look at what the man did with his overall target share. If we look at 21-year-old rookies since the year 2000 to average more than 23% of their team's targets on a per-game basis, you had Drake London this past season. Before that, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Mike Evans, and Christian McCaffrey. So I love the talent of London. I loved him coming out of USC as well. The primary question is, can the Atlanta Falcons passing offense give you anything this next season? Or are they going to be as bad as they were last year? Probably can't be as bad. Same thing with the Chicago Bears, right? I mean, similar situation with DJ Moore here, where it's going to be very, very hard for the Chicago Bears to be as bad as they were last year throwing the football, where they were the worst passing offense the NFL has seen over the past decade. I actually think that both the Atlanta Falcons and the Chicago Bears are going to be the most improved passing offenses in the NFL in 2023. DJ Moore has looked phenomenal in the preseason. But what I will say is, yeah, we know DJ Moore is a great talent. We know DJ Moore can rack up yards after the catch. So should we be pushing up DJ Moore a ton just because we confirmed our priors and we saw two highlight clips on Twitter? Probably not, right? It kind of seems like maybe it's just a hype train getting a little bit of out of control. So if you could go through and say sell DJ Moore for Amari Cooper, 
sell DJ Moore for DK Metcalf, sell him for Calvin Ridley, sell DJ Moore for any wide receiver that's here above this, then I definitely would go ahead and do it. And then obviously DJ Moore with guys like Debo Samuel, Christian Watson, Keenan Allen, the guys in the same tier, it's just going to be up to you and your personal preference. Never tell someone that they'd have to go through and trade a guy for someone else in the same tier. They're all about the same. Now, our next wide receiver will be someone that I was a little hesitant to go all in on, but now looks much better. Tyler Lockett has had three straight seasons of a top 24 finish from a points per game perspective. Now, the reason I was worried about Tyler Lockett is I am such a Jackson Smith and Jigba fanboy that I thought JSN would eat into what Tyler Lockett would give you this next season. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to go ahead. I'm going to have to move up Tyler Lockett with the Jackson Smith and Jigba injury. Now, to be fair, I still expect JSN ahead of Tyler Lockett in the target total poll by the time we get to the end of the year. Keep in mind, Tyler Lockett's about to turn 31 years old this next season. But, I mean, it, it's hard to go through and rank Tyler Lockett any lower than this with the JSN injury. And our two next guys will be Godwin and Evans. I mean, with Godwin and Evans, it's hard to have them rate this low as well. I mean, we're essentially saying that both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, while the worst fantasy football seasons we have seen over the past four seasons. And honestly, I'm kind of fine in saying that based off the quarterback play that you're going to have with Baker Mayfield. I mean, even if you go through and pull up the season-long pickums on underdog fantasy right now, you'll see that Mike Evans, a wide receiver that has averaged I'm sorry, not average, that has had a 1,000 receiving yards in every single season of his NFL career is only at 924 and a half receiving yards on underdog fantasy. So it looks like everybody else kind of agrees. It looks like everybody else is saying, yeah, you're going to see some serious regression in this overall offense. And quick side note for everybody screaming at me that my DJ Moore's rankings too low. I mean, I'm looking at this underdog fantasy pick em, and they have DJ Moore at four and a half receiving touchdowns and 800 and a half receiving yards. And so, of course, if you want to go check any of those out for this season, get in a draft with us, or go take advantage of that exclusive Josh Allen pick em week one against the Jets, more than less than half a passing yard, find that link in the live chat description, comment section, underdog fantasy, promo code flog for 100% of positive match and my 2023 fantasy football rankings and guide. Now, going over to our next guy, we'll be looking at Brandon Ayuk. With Ayuk, I agree. I think that he is trending in the right direction while Debo Samuel is trending in the wrong direction. My thing is we've seen the elite level ceiling from Debo Samuel before where Debo Samuel went out there and was the wide receiver three from a points per game perspective two years ago. Brandon Ayuk, two years ago, wide receiver 57. This past year, wide receiver 25. I mean, I know Ayuk looks like the traditional wide receiver. I mean, you're used to turning on the TV and seeing a wide receiver running real routes, not getting manufactured touches, and that is Brandon Ayuk. That's not Debo Samuel, but I'm not about drafting the wide receiver that looks the best on the TV screen. I'm about drafting the guy that's going to score the most fantasy points. Now, Christian Kirk, he will be our next player, and with Kirk, obviously we are saying it's going to be worse this next season, which I don't think is too hot of a take, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you have Calvin Ridley coming in. And what's most concerning is if you looked at the usage with these wide receivers in Jacksonville in the preseason, it looks like there's a very real chance that Zay Jones is playing over Christian Kirk in two wide receiver sets. And Kirk is more so a slot wide receiver for this next season. So, yeah, I think you have to be lower on Kurt. Deontay Johnson, as our next guy, was just one of the least efficient wide receivers we've ever seen in the NFL last season. The man somehow averaged eight and a half targets per game with 1.5 yards per route run. I don't know if I've ever seen someone so inefficient. Now, McLaurin leading off our next tier, obviously a big time faller, but... I mean, we were a little hesitant in drafting him going into this next season saying, okay, well, this is going to be a 28-year-old wide receiver that's never been a top 20 wide receiver from a points per game perspective. What's the true ceiling that we have? While at the same time, now he's dealing with the turf toe, I, I think he has to fall. And then Michael Pittman with our next slot is a wide receiver I hated last year. This year, it's a much better price point. You're getting him as a wide receiver four in underdog drafts. Now, I hate talking Indianapolis for what they did with Jonathan Taylor, but we will save that for another video. Hollywood Brown at 33 is possibly going to be in the worst offense in the NFL this next season. Right now, if you look at Las Vegas sports books, I mean, pretty much in consensus, they have the Arizona Cardinals as the worst team in the NFL with only four and a half for their projected wins this next year. 
I would say um, probably a spot where we don't want to have any of these guys. Probably a spot where it looks like they're burning down and just full-blown tanking. We may not even get Kyler Murray. Now, George Pickens will be our next wide receiver at 34. With Pickens, I've actually drafted him way more than Deontay Johnson this offseason. Just because Deontay's gotten around five of underdog drafts for the past few months. George Pickens, we used to be able to get in round seven. Round seven, I really do like that price tag. But I don't necessarily know if we should just move him up. Get some highlight grabs that he had in the preseason. Where now he's going closer to round five. Now, Jahan Dotson will be our next player at 35. And, I mean, it is a crazy world where we are ranking Jahan Dotson here, yes, ahead of JSN. Yes, ahead of Jerry Judy. But I mean, at the end of the day, you have Jahan Dotson in a spot with no Terry McLaurin, where he can naturally be sliding up in his own right. And there's an outside chance that if Jahan Dotson ends up starting super strong this next year, he may end up being the wide receiver one in Washington at the end of the day. Now, JSN is our next player at 36. For a rookie to miss the beginning of the season, it's going to be brutal. Even if it's just a wrist injury, even if he's just going to be missing a few weeks, I mean, it's crucial for him to get on the field and start playing as early as possible with these guys. And then Jerry Judy at 37 is a wide receiver that is very painful to talk about in that with hamstring injuries, the issue is we have no idea when he's coming back. Not only do we have no idea when he's coming back, but at the same time, we don't know if we can start him when he comes back. And we don't know if he is going to get injured again later on in the season. I'm a little bit more willing to bet on JSN with the wrist. Just because I'd say with the wrist injury, at the end of the day, maybe you're not going to be very risky in week 10, week 11 to re-aggravate the same injury. Where I think maybe you do have that risk with the hamstring of someone like Jerry Judy. But I think that's all we have for you in this video. Again, thank you so much for checking it out. And of course, if you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you want to go get your fantasy football team broken down by yours truly in a podcast, or go get all my updated fantasy football rankings or all my premium content, you can find that over on flockfantasy.com. On flockfantasy.com, if you sign up with promo code flock, you're going to get 30% off any subscription. And also, with promo code FLOCK and the Mother Flocker tier, yours truly is going to go through and break down your fantasy football team with a podcast. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you, and I really hope I get to see you out with a live stream later tonight.